So for instance, if you have a round face, uh, oh fuck that. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Hi guys, it's Lou. Today's video is not quite a follow-up, but more like an extension of a video I did about six months ago called Why We Look Better in a Mirror Than a Picture. There were a lot of comments on this video. Most of those were people saying that after watching the video, they now had confirmation that they were ugly. No. Now let me read you a couple of those comments. There are a lot. I'm ugly, that's what I learned. You know that I always ask if you've learned something. All this time, I'm just an ugly sack of poop. I look ugly either way. I'm so ugly. Spoiler alert, you ugly. Maybe I'm just ugly. Okay, got it. I'm effing ugly, thank you. I didn't say you were ugly. LOL, I think I'm pretty ugly, so I must be really ugly. So, people found several reasons to call themselves ugly, which was not the point of the video and not at all the kind of feeling that you were supposed to be left with after watching. So we're gonna delve a little bit deeper into that because I have found some more information on why we look better in a mirror than a picture. Now, some of this stuff I've talked about, but there's new information and it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Let's talk about the flipped version of you that you see in a picture. Not only are we not used to seeing ourselves flipped, we're used to seeing things where they are. For instance, if I saw a picture of myself flipped and my part was not on the right but the left, that's something different. Most people have one eye that's larger than the other. Most people have one curvier eyebrow than the other. Most people, I know myself, smile slightly more on one side than the other. And a lot of people have a mole, a scar, or some kind of facial feature that's only on one side. I absolutely do. It's this side. I'm sure you get the idea of where I'm going with this if you add all of those things together and you're used to seeing what you see in a mirror and suddenly the picture is flipped, we are not pleased with what we see because it's not familiar and people are more comfortable with what's familiar. Now to give you a better idea of this, I am going to show you a picture that we all know very well. Here's one of the world's most famous faces and that is of the Mona Lisa. Now when you look at that, which one do you prefer? It's going to be the one that you've seen all along for so many years. And that's how we feel about looking at a mirror and a picture. We are so used to one and not the other. So in short, the mirror is a firm impression of what we look like to ourselves. And over time, we've established a preference for what we see in the mirror. And as humans, we are psychologically inclined to prefer something that we're familiar with, even if, and this could be so, we look better in a picture. It's just not something that we're used to, so we hate it. Again, no one is symmetrical, and here are a few pictures of some famous faces that prove that. Now, as beautiful as Brad Pitt is, his left symmetry is very different than his right symmetry. Not so bad, though. Here's Lucy Liu. I don't see much difference in her face on the left and the right. She looks pretty good in all of them. There is a slight difference with her eyes, but not so much so where we wouldn't recognize her if she was symmetrical either way. So here's Tina Fey, and what's crazy about this, although she looks pretty symmetrical, look how wide her eyes are open in the right symmetry compared to the left. Much bigger in the right, and if you look at the original picture, that's where you see it. One larger eye than the other, which everybody has. Oh, George Clooney. Uh, his part is not helping him out very much. He has two parts in his left symmetry and none in his right. The right looks better, the left looks fuller, but he still looks pretty good. Oh, Bill Murray. Now, his left symmetry looks a lot like him. His right, not as much. And I think it's the nose but he has a pretty even slit for a mouth straight across. And Marilyn Monroe, she looks pretty symmetrical. Beautiful in both pictures, and I think it's the lighting there that's making her look a little bit different in left and right symmetry. Left, she's a lot brighter, right, lots of shadows. Okay, 
enough about that. We're going to talk about cameras now and camera lenses and the big part that they play in the pictures that we see of ourselves. First of all, pictures only provide a two-dimensional version of ourselves. The proximity of your face to the camera can distort certain features, making them look larger than they do in real life. I know that when I see a picture of myself that was taken fairly closely, my nose looks big and I don't have a big nose. Now here's a look at focal length that affects perspective distortion. Now look how much this guy is distorted by the lens. He is not moving, just the camera lens. Have you ever wondered how those pictures you see of movie stars or models that were taken by the paparazzi when these people weren't prepared actually look great? Well that is because the photographers have those giant zoom lenses so pictures from far away always look better so if your arm is long enough go ahead and take that selfie otherwise get a stick another factor with taking pictures is angle distortion and that's pretty easy to understand if you have a double chin you take the picture from up high if you want your jaw to seem more defined you take it at a lower angle now what's crazy about those two angles is they actually create a feeling in the person seeing the pictures about you. Like when you take pictures from below might make you seem a little bit arrogant and condescending while taking it from above you seem a little bit more subservient and insecure. So for those reasons we might want to look straight on to the camera so no one gets any feelings about us. Maybe a little. Here's a big one and I'm a true believer in how this makes a person look and that is your smile. Only time I've ever liked a picture of myself is when it was candid and I was not ready for it and I have a smile. That's because that smile is natural. When you're looking at yourself in the mirror you usually feel relaxed and confident and you're more likely to smile and act naturally. Now I don't know about that because I don't smile at myself in the mirror but I do know that when someone is trying to take a picture of me and says smile that smile doesn't turn out so well. Great. <laughs> now Chandler you want to give us a smile? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, is the seat uncomfortable? No, I am. <laughs> when someone says, say cheese, you tense up and feel a little self-conscious. So a tense smile that we see in that photograph is much different than the relaxed smile that we see in the mirror. And lastly, with the camera stuff, the flash also obviously makes a huge difference. Did you know that camera flashes can add seven years to your face. Cameras can't adjust to light and dark the way our eyes can. Cameras only focus on highlights and shadows, and that can be the reason that pictures don't look so flattering. So what additional information did we learn today about looking better in a mirror than a picture? We like what's familiar. We don't like what's not. We photograph much better from far away. Angles matter. Camera flashes are evil. We don't really smile well on command. Last but not least, we just look different in pictures. Not ugly. That's it you guys for this video on why we look better in a mirror than a picture. Follow up. Part two, extension, edition, sequel. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I know I did. That's a great smile. <laughs> Easy, natural. Now pretend I have a camera. <laughs> if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed but would like to be, please hit that button down below and you'll see me very soon with more videos. Bye guys.